Let's take a look at the tangent line formula from an algebra point of view. Uh, we have L of x equals f of 5. We were using 5 as our central point. Uh, t f of x equals, uh, L of x equals five, f of 5 plus f prime of 5 times x minus 5. That's in general. Um, if uh, we're using x cubed, then L of x was 125, that's 5 cubed, plus 75 times x minus 5. So looking at this formula, is this like y equals mx plus b, which is called slope-intercept form, because it's got the slope m and the intercept b? Or is it like a point-slope form, Maybe you don't remember point slope form. Point slope form. I'll give you a sec to try to write it here or pause the video. It is y equals y1 plus m times x minus x1. That's one way to write it. So which way, uh, which version is more similar here? Well, you probably figured out that this one is how we're writing our tangent line. We're not using slope-intercept form. That's because point-slope form is all about what's happening now, where x1 is time now. And in calculus, we like to be modern people and say what's happening now or right around now. So we're going to give this a big yay. And in fact, we like it so much we're going to draw a nice big heart around it and say we want to keep using point-slope form and not to be negative people or anything, but we're going to say boo! Get out of here to slope-intercept form. We will basically never use slope-intercept form in Calc 1. Um, it's actually more useful in statistics than it is in calculus, so that's an interesting story. Uh, another form you might also see that uh, we can talk about, and some people were taught this as point-slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It's basically this, but with the y1 moved over here. I'd say that's still true, but it's less preferred. Um, it'll come up in uh, chapter 4.4. 4. Um, but for the most part, we want to use this version of point-slope form because it gives us a direct value for the new, uh, for, for the final y value, which we call L of x, rather than giving us the change and then us having to add the change to the y1 value over on this side. So um, maybe you're tired of using 5. That's OK. I am too. Uh, let's write out what we've been using. So we had f of 5 plus f prime at 5 times x minus 5. Um, and so that was at or near 5. I mean, that's still the formula for L of x even when x is not near 5, but it's a better approximation the closer you are to 5. Um, if you're tired of 5, let's replace it with some other number. Um, and instead of a number, we're going to replace it with a letter. We can't use x because x is some value other than 5, or sometimes uh, in this formula x can be something other than 5. So we're going to replace it with some other letter. We're going to call it c. And that's a time or location on the horizontal axis, just like 5 was for us. So we could say L of x equals f of c plus f prime at c times x minus c. Uh, if this is your second time through Calc 1, you might be remembering there's a time we use C in Calc 1 a lot. But this is a lowercase c, and that other time is when we're doing integration, and that's an uppercase c, and they aren't really related to each other. In particular, this c value is a location on the horizontal axis. In uh, later chapters in integration, the capital C we're using is more like a vertical thing. So we don't have to just use 5 anymore. We can use c. So let's try applying this. It actually gets kind of tricky. Uh, let's do a new problem. Let's consider 
f of x equals x to the fourth with c equals negative one. It's usually a good idea to graph things when you can. x to the fourth looks like a parabola with a really flat uh, point near the origin. And here I am at c equals negative one. Um, I'll give you a helpful fact uh, that f prime at negative one equals negative four. Can you see that the slope of a tangent line there or the slope of a linear approximation would at least be negative? So I'm going to write a formula for the tangent line or for the uh, best local linear approximation and you pause and think whether you're, it's right. Um, so can I write L of x equals f of x plus f prime of x times x minus c. And I could try to specialize that to uh, x to the fourth plus negative four times x minus c. Is that a good idea? Is that our tangent line formula? Well, our tangent line formula should give us a line. Maybe I'm not too controversial in saying that. But is this formula linear? Well, this part is linear. But this part has an x to the fourth. That's not going to be linear. This part of the formula should not have an x in it. It should be f of c, which is a number not involving x. So it'd be better to write L of x equals f of negative 1. So I'm plugging in that value of c equals negative 1. I'm not just leaving it as x plus f prime of negative 1 times, and now this part gets a little tricky, it's x minus c. c itself is negative 1, so it's x minus minus 1. And we know uh, f is x to the fourth, so this will be negative 1 to the fourth. You really do need those parentheses there. And then we have this uh, given fact that f prime at negative 1 is negative 4 times x minus minus 1. You could collapse those minuses into a plus, but I really like leaving it from the way it came to us uh, so we can see, oh, c is negative 1 here. Um, so should I do any arithmetic or algebra on this to convert it to slope-intercept form? I will remind you, slope-intercept form? No! Boo! We want to just leave things in point-slope form. So just leave it like that. You could do a tiny bit of arithmetic on that if you want, but don't multiply this slope through. Uh, especially don't add these two numbers because this one is multiplied by that. Um, so it's perfectly fine to leave it in that form.